Uh, we have a lot of interesting stuff coming up. You know, there's there's an election year coming up. There's the happening coming up. There's a lot of um, key points to keep an eye out for that are there's ETFs, all these ETFs. Well, the ETFs, if you know, I, I know, you know, when you look at it this way, if, I think what we see, I think BlackRock had to resubmit their filing. Yeah. Um, they had submitted it. There probably was something wrong with it or whatever it was, but they had to resubmit and correct it. Uh, but, you know, in, in my past experience, with BlackRock, you know, what, what they want, they kind of get. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Uh, yeah. And speaking of them, actually them and I think Fidelity, a few of them had to refile it. And a lot of it was actually clarifying that Coinbase is basically their partner. So it, a lot of it is, that might be dumbing it down, but like basically um, establishing Coinbase's role in their ETF application, which again. As, as the uh, custodian, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And again, yeah. they're, of course, being sued by Gary Gensler in the SEC. So I was going to talk about that in a minute. But to your point, Ewok, because BlackRock was the main catalyst out of all these banks doing this, they own everything already. They were the first one to really file for this. Um, today, Larry Fink, BlackRock CEO, I'm sure if you guys are watching, you may have seen this on Twitter already today, but he was on Fox News, uh, Fox Business, actually, and I think actually called, Bit you know, nothing that's new to us, but called Bitcoin like digital gold, talked about it being an international asset. Basically, the suits are here when it comes to crypto now. I mean, and, and that's something that, you know, was an inevitability. I mean, there's no point really fighting it, I don't think. Um but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. I don't think it is a good thing. I'm literally looking at a tweet by Michael Saylor right now celebrating this piece of news. Like, what happened to the, you know, cypherpunk attitude and the self-sovereignty and stuff? And uh, now it's just like, oh, yeah, we've got a spot TTF and they're all celebrating it. So yeah. I, I'm not th – this was going to happen. I'm not saying it wasn't going to happen. That's fine. I just – I, I don't care about those people being involved in, in Bitcoin. And I, I think it's going to help diminish returns, frankly, over time. So what's a you about that? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it'll, I, you know, I think short term, it's going to help. It's going to help these guys pump their bags. That's why they're excited, first of all, uh, because it's going to be tough to get back to those six. Well, not back, but to get to those six figure Bitcoin prices without them. Um <laughs> I, you know, I just, I, I don't see it happening without the, the bigger institutional money because it's so heavy now. It's so hard to move the price without that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I agree. I think that um, that's why they're excited because they know they'll see those higher prices. Uh, but what they get long term could be a different story. I think there could be, you know, you're just asking for a lot more manipulation uh, a lot more middlemen that want their piece of the pie, and yeah, long term, I don't, I don't see it as being a good thing. But yeah, you know, uh, again, that's why they're happy is because it pumps their bags. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where, like, you know, water is wet. I mean, this was going to happen. We should, you know, anybody that denies that they thought it was going to happen, it, I mean, this was going to happen eventually. It just, I don't, I don't love it for crypto but it, it was going to happen. So we just got to find our ways around it. And if it's still like the crazy gains over the next, you know, eight to 10 years that you're after, well, Bitcoin's just not going to be the way to do it, unfortunately. So um, you'll have to find another plan if you are looking in that direction. We'll talk about some of those tonight, but in terms of these ETFs, so yeah, officially naming Coinbase is their custodian and stuff like that with it. Gensler's got to be gone, right? I mean, I know we saw what I think was a fake piece of news over the weekend, um, that you got duped by Ewok because you're gullible like that. Um, no, I'm just messing with you. But I, there, it was going around, and a lot of people quoted it, that Gensler himself was stepping down. I don't think there was truth to that. But certainly, like, he's he's got to be on the ropes. Like, he's basically shitting on every single person's party in the world right now when it comes to this stuff. Well, if he's not, if he's not on the ropes, then it's pretty obvious that he was paid to be put there to do mm -hmm. the things that he's doing. I mean, if, if, if they're not fed up with, with what he's doing and how he's running the show, uh, then it's a clear picture to me that he was put there to, to do this stuff uh, from the, from the guys running the show. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's how, that's how I look at it. If, if, yeah, if, if he survives another year, even um, then, then we know he was, he was placed to, to do a job uh, to attack the market bring some FUD 
um, to a lot of things so that these bigger banks could could probably get in at a better entry price. So Yeah. Yep. And that makes total sense. And that's why, you know, we've had some speculation. And it, I, I saw somebody ask this question on one of our streams within the last couple of weeks when this ETF news started. And um, it's they, they said, why would this be bearish for price action eventually? Or why would this why why would this help diminish the gains? Well, because of what you just said, Ewok. I mean, yeah, we're having um, like right now and actually not even probably still now, but over the last few months, we've had these institutions buying at the, you know, back into the FTX days in November of last year. You don't think they wanted to scoop up $15,000 BTC, you know, at that time. We've now done a 2X off of that. Regular folks in retail aren't going to be buying into this stuff until deep into 2024 again, probably. So, you know, they're going to be buying when it's running up to the 60Ks again, getting to previous all-time highs, surpassing all-time highs. And that's why some have speculated that once we get a little bit beyond those all-time highs, we, we may not see just the standard thing. So we did about a 3x off of 20K, the previous market's top, yeah, market's top at 69K. <clears throat> Does that just mean we do a 2x? Well, that would still be 140K BTC in this coming bull market. I just don't know. I don't know with all of these major, major players coming in. So I know we've kind of approached this before, but what do you think about that? I know we're looking a couple of years down the road still, but what what do these huge institutions coming in do to Bitcoin's price and the um, uh, market cap of crypto as a whole this cycle? Well, again, I think early or early on, it, it it's good. I think it, it gives people um, a little more trust for some reason. They like to trust their banks. Yeah. Um <laughs> And I do think we hit, you know, I I said before, I think it's 135, 140 ish, uh, is is my top call. I don't I don't think it goes much more than a two x, but yeah, uh, we'll see we'll see what the you know, that that whole trust mechanism built into some of these ETFs and the and the trading um, funds now that it'll be on the major market. Well, it's really hard to say. I, I just I, I don't. I don't like the thought of injecting more middlemen into the whole thing. Um, again, I think it always corrupts things. Um, it could be a short-term bullish thing, but long-term bearish for it. Um, but we just have to wait to see how it plays out. I agree with you. I, I'm at the point where I would honestly be ecstatic with 140K BTC uh, this next cycle. I mean, if we would get there, there's a lot of people just like claiming, and they're traders because they are always kind of behind the eight ball, I think, with the overall market um, in a longer time frame. But they're just acting like it's fact. I saw that Pintoshi account talking about 180K BTC in 2026. I honestly, I heavily doubt that. But uh, yeah, I think people just have to kind of look at the environment right now and um, see where we are. If we get six-figure BTC this time around, I will be very, very happy. So um you know, I know a lot of people out there are still just claiming that that's definitely going to happen. We'll, we'll see. The, I, I hope that it does. But again, this is why if you are still in it for the newer products that have more gains than just the paltry ones you'll get from BTC and even ETH, maybe at this point, we'll talk about those tonight, obviously. So 